Hi, I'm Lisa, and this is Threshold in China, a segment that gave you a taste of the future before it actually happens. Today, I'm going to talk about emerging technologies that have life-changing potential and assess their ability to influence our life in the near future. In 2022, more than 900,000 people worldwide are fighting to survive famine-like conditions, and it is 10 times more than that of five years ago. The world is facing a serious food crisis. Today, we are going to talk about a technology that helps to grow more food. It is called aerial seeding. So basically, it is spreading seeds using an aircraft. It is a technology that is becoming increasingly popular across the world, especially when the field is large. It can ensure that the seeds are evenly distributed by programming UAVs, that it spreads the seeds in a precise pattern. But one of the problems with this method to sow is that when the seed dropped from the aircraft, they are often left on the ground unburied. Birds and other animals come and eat them up. They are also blown away easily by the wind. So the crops don't grow. Well, scientists from Zhejiang University and Carnegie Mellon University have developed something to help. They've created a new technology that enabled seeds to drill into the ground automatically, making aerial seeding much more effective and efficient. They've actually found inspiration in a type of plant called erodium. Its fruits tend to be shaped like long bird beak, and each fruit has five carpels, each containing a spiral seed up to six centimeters long. A swollen arrow-like americab at one end containing the embryo and a slender spiraling beak. The spiraling beak works like a spring that can catapult itself half a meter from the parent plant. Once landed on the ground, the change of moisture in the surrounding environment, such as a sudden shower of rain, would cause the beak to uncoil and coil again, generating thrust to drill itself like a corkscrew into the ground. This gave erodium a very high germination rate. With this in mind, scientists have come up with seed carriers shaped like erodium beak. They've used wood veneer to make these carriers because it's stiff enough to drill into the soil and it also responds to moisture changes. When it gets wet, it bends and coils, allowing it to self-drill into the soil. The secret here is that the wood veneer is composed of alternating layers of soft wood and hard wood. These two kind of layers have different compositions and structures, so when they absorb water, they swirl to different degrees, and this causes the layer to slide against each other, resulting in larger bending angles than that of other materials. More thrust is generated for an elastic material such as wood veneer, so it screws nicely into the soil. The scientists tested it out in different weather conditions. During the experiment, two light rainfalls occurred on the first day and a six-hour thunderstorm with heavy rain on the second day. The results show that the anchored seeds have a 61% germination rate and the seed carriers could germinate naturally without human assistance after five to seven days in an open environment. In comparison, unburied seeds only achieved a 12.5 germination rate in the same condition, similar to conventional aerial seeding. Now, making these carriers is a process involving cutting, shaping, sanding and gluing thin sheets of wood veneer together. It seems to be a very labour-intensive work, so could this process be automated in the future for mass production? Well, the answer is yes. Scientists are already thinking about solutions such as using cutting and shaping machines, robotic arms, and even 3D printing. Let's move on to our threshold rating, that is readiness, novelty, and ripple. The readiness category refers to the maturity of a technology from lab demonstration, that is a one, to mass production, that is a five. The novelty scores refers to how new the innovation is. One means there is a small differentiation from existing technology, and five means the innovation fulfills a new function. Finally, Ripple is our opinion of a technology's potential for life-changing impacts and how widely it can be applied elsewhere. So, 
How good is it according to the standard of threshold rating? The researchers have tested this technique in various conditions and designs, including single-tailed seed carriers with single-coiled and double-coiled bodies. They've even made a larger version of the carrier for the endangered white bark pine seed. Hence, the carriers could be customized and adapted to different tasks. However, the biggest hurdle, as we mentioned before, is how to automate the production process, which would eventually bring down cost and increase production. Therefore, at this stage, it is a coup for readiness. Next is novelty. The self-drilling seed carriers has never been seen before, and this team is the first to try it. This is probably why Nature magazine featured it as their cover story, so it is a form. Now we have to decide how much influence it's going to have. The self-drilling seed carriers can be used for the quick deployment of seeds, microorganisms, and other soil nutrients through aerial delivery. This could have some very promising impact in agriculture, reforestation, and preservation conservation of the environment. But there are limitations. Since these seeds carriers are made out of wood veneers, they may not withstand extreme weather conditions such as heavy rain or strong winds for a long period. Soil conditions can also affect the ability of seed carriers to drill, with moist and well-drained soil being preferred. Also, a large amount of wood and glue are needed to produce the seed carrier pods. The wood will need to be sourced sustainably, and manufacturers need to ensure that the type of glue used in these seed pods will not cause soil degradation by leaving behind harmful chemicals. All these conditions need to be met for commercializing and mass deployment of this aerial seeding technique. For now, it is a three for the ripples category, and let's look out for future developments. To sum up, the seed carriers get a two, four, and three in each category, and it's right on the brink of our threshold. In the past five years, China has done a lot of research into sustainable farming. They have found ways to make dry land fertile, turn salt water into drinking water, made crops that can grow in deserts, and even created a new way to plant seeds from the air that is more efficient and less expensive. If all these new techniques were used together, they could turn a quarter of China's land, which is desert, into farmland. They could also use these same ideas to stop the spread of desert and make new forests to help fight climate change. Human technologies is often inspired by nature. In one of our previous episodes, we talked about how scientists made a manta ray robots to help us explore the deep sea. What other nature-mimicking innovation have you heard of? As usual, we welcome your feedback and thoughts. Bye.